My name is Fred Kitinzi. I'm the mod organizer and the moderator of this webinar. Um, I run a digital agency, and uh, we understand in this period of pandemic and all the crisis and uncertainty we are in, we want to still communicate and share our brand stories. And there is no better storytellers than the two people we have today, our two speakers today. That is Jackson Biko and Doug or Douglas Otiembo. Uh, I think. Jackson, you go first, or Biko, you go first, and then Douglas will briefly introduce himself. Right. So my name is Jackson Biko. Um, my uh, online persona is Biko Zulu. Uh, I'm Kenyan, not South African. 42 years of age. I've been writing for dog years. This is my 10th year doing my blog uh, and my 13th year writing generally. But I'd say, you know, 10 years doing serious writing, not just messing around. Father of two, love of life. Thanks. You said the benchmark. Uh, thanks, Biko. Doug? All right. My name is uh, Doug Odiambo. And Biko, it's a pleasure to meet you finally. Nice to meet you too, brother. Um, I'm, I've been a copywriter, an advertising copywriter for about 10 years now. Uh, I've worked for all the big boys Young and Rue becomes Canada, name it. Uh, I've consulted with Fred himself a lot at Belva Digital. And uh, I've been a storyteller since I was a kid myself. Uh, I remember I loved reading and uh, my dad was a literature student, so all his books were my books and loved writing stories since then. And uh, I, I've enjoyed writing stories for brands. And today I, I live in Diani and I, I, I'm the uh, brand uh, director and, and director of digital content for Inua Entertainment. Inua Entertainment is uh, an entertainment and uh, communications business in Diani, but we've got clients from all over. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we had 92 participants. That's very good. Uh, Biko, if you present your screen and get started. Right. There's, there's, oh. a, there's a presentation thing down there. You can, if you click on it, um, I think people will be able to see your full screen. Do I get your permission to click? So the, the one on the right? Yes, that one. I think you see your mouse Lightly. there. Yeah. Right. Good, good, good. Yeah, there you go. All right, excellent. Okay. Um, so today's uh, been uh, eight years since my mother died. My mother died today. Um, she... What time is it now? It's 11. She has probably one hour to go. Then she'll be kaput. Oh, uh, so I know. And yeah, yeah. thanks. Thanks, it's Fred, right for thing to be doing now. speaking today too for this webinar. Oh my if, God, if I break I'm into sorry. An FDA, if I break into an SDA hymn, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Some quote. <laughs> uh, all right. Talking, talking of mothers, eh? uh, so I have a, I have a, uh, a, a very close friend of mine, she's a, single, she's a single mother, and the other day she was telling me that um, her son is seven years old, and um, she's finding it increasingly hard to discipline the boy because he's getting tall and stronger. So normally what she does, she tells me, is she tells the boy to lie down and wax him on the bottom three times with a ruler. So she was asking me, what do you think I should do? Because now I can't hold him down and he's fighting me, you know, and he doesn't want to be caned. <clears throat> and I said, first, stop beating him with a ruler. Um, you know, if you want to beat him, take a belt, right? And I told her that when we were growing up, my mom, there was no for lying on the ground and you're given three whacks. You were just beaten like a snake. So she take a twig and uh, after about six walks that would break. And then she'd pretty much um, look for anything to beat you with. Uh, we didn't die, uh, nothing broke and we are here. I have, I have so many of these stories from my mom. And, and for me, um, Storytelling, this is the essence of storytelling. You, you tell a story, 
and it evokes an emotion in, say, Fred. And Fred says, ah, OK, you guys were beaten like that. This is how us guys were disciplined. And it's, it's, it's now evolves. Storytelling evolves um, uh, through different people and through different voices. And you, you're never going to kill storytelling because it's, it's pretty much in our human DNA, right? And especially this time of COVID, which is a very terrible time to find ourselves in because we never imagined that we'd be here today, staring out the window, you know, not being able to see smiles because you know, it's covered in masks. I, I remember um, that uh, I had I, I planned, I was saving up to go to Japan this year in June. Uh, because I'm really curious about their, how they make their furniture. So the Japanese, they don't use nails on their furniture. They just wedge the, the joints together without nails. It's a very sort of Zen way of making furniture and I'm very curious about that. And I've, I've been saving money to go to Japan to sort of look at how they do this thing. Because I know a guy at uh, the Goretti Corner who does that. Maybe you don't need to go the way to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in Joro? So I know in Joro. I know in Joro. Yeah. yeah. So so and 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 there's no way I would have imagined that we'd be here today, right? And all of a sudden, this feels extremely trivial. You know, this idea that you know that I want to travel so far to bloody learn about furniture. Now the things that matter, the things that matter now is not even furniture. It's, uh, it's, um, it's staying alive, it's paying rent tomorrow. It's finding out um, my health lives in Kangwari and she's unwell. It's, it's finding out, is she okay? You know, what does she need? You know. Um, is she eating because she has kids? So all of a sudden, everything has been extremely rendered useless, right? And it's, it's at this time that it's important for us, you know, and for brands to tell their stories because we've moved from an era of self where we're thinking about I, 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 I need to see Japanese wood to, you know, share the humanity, you know, um, we, we, we have to now think of each other as humans, not as I individuals. And whereas, sorry? Because I think that's really nice. Yeah, I think go ahead. Yeah. Somebody speaking. Uh, um, when, if you go back to the previous slide, where you talk about an error, no, the, 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 the next one. Uh, an error, no an era of shared humanity, yeah, this one. And, and, and as a brand, you know, um, you've got to be, you, you, you really are a member of the community. A product like say, brands like Coca-Cola and EABL have diverted their marketing, uh, their marketing budgets towards uh, um, efforts to fight Corona. And 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 uh, Jameson is 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 donating is is, is actually giving money to uh, barmaids and and people who work in in in, in the beverage industry. Um, these brands understand one very important thing. As a brand, it's kind of like I was I was studying law, and they taught us that a company is 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 an individual, is a person. So a brand is also a person. You've got to, you've, you've got to, you've got to be part of the community efforts. You've got to be part of the. If the community is feeling pain, you're also feeling pain. If the community is happy, you're also happy. So even the way you speak, as a brand, you cannot speak at people. You've got to speak with people. So I think yes, we're in an era of shared humanity right now. Yeah. Sorry to interject. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. So. Um, Everything has changed, as I said. So, uh, whereas um, the, the human condition, the previous human condition, uh, was that we are social beings, we'd go for concerts, we'd sit in bars. Now, with this new experience, we are isolated. Uh, before there was 
there was a feeling of individualism and status. Um, but now we have to look at our hardships and our sacrifices that we make to survive. Uh, previously, we had consumerism and just conspicuous consumption and instant gratification of, you know, I want this now and I want it tomorrow. Now it's we're faced with scarcity and insecurity. But it's not all bleak, eh? It's, it's not all bleak. There's an opportunity for brands right now to sort of tap into these tensions, eh? Uh, and, and, and amplify certain values, okay? Values like community and connectedness, purpose and shared humanity, um, empathy, compassion, encouragement, hope, simplicity, and basically what, you know, the uh, Ubuntu, right? Um, I, 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 when, I, when I think of brands and the stories they tell, I think of uh, Nike, you know? Uh, I am a runner. Well, that sounds serious. I, I run once in a while to keep fit. And I buy Nike shoes because it's a good product, but also over and above selling shoes, Nike has a very powerful narrative that is just not about consumerism. It's about humanity, okay? Uh, if you see, uh, I think we, we, we saw the, the Colin Saga, the, the American footballer, these guys were kneeling down during the, the national anthem. Uh, I saw lots of ads. Colin, yes. You see, so, so Nike jumped on that, and the message was very powerful, <clears throat> you know, and it was not about shoes. It was something bigger than us, right? It was about believing in something, something right, doing the right thing. So Nike, what in essence, what it's done is build a community or a tribe, right? a sense of tribe and everybody in this tribe are connected by these values. And I think it's this time, yeah, that brands more than ever should amplify their voice, okay? This is not the time for brands to keep quiet because oh, it's very uncertain, we don't know what to do, okay? This is a time for brands to speak up but not sell products, um, but it's choose certain values and experiences, right? I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a saying by Martin Luther King, where he said, we remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Yes. This is the time that I need Nike to speak up about something, not to be quiet. Um, we, I did some work with Safaricom lately. Uh, I think it's Bonga for food, right? It's, it's, it's basically what this means is Safaricom was saying, look, this is a time to help somebody who is in need to buy food with your bonga points. So it's just not about, you know, um, our products, but it's about helping another human being. So it's, it's shared humanity, pretty much what we're talking about. Yes, uh, this is true. If I, if I, if I may add something, um, it's, it's also about a balance. You've got to be careful with it because, um, yes, it's, everyone is at home and everybody is consuming whatever we are sharing online as brands. But uh, again, you've got to be careful not to do too much. You've got to be careful not to, you know, you, you risk looking like an, an opportunist, if you, if you know what I mean. If, yeah. if, if you're doing something that's not relevant to what your brand is, for example, if, for example, your your pampas, or or say you are you are um, ever ready and you make batteries, and all of a sudden you you start you start uh, donating pampas, it 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 doesn't connect. It's got to be something relevant to your brand. And since 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 uh, we're talking about storytelling and telling stories about brands, um, people who are responsible for this shouldn't really worry too much about. Uh, um, whether it's sales you're supposed to be doing or, or messages the communities resonate with. Um, to be honest, I mean, we're business people. We worry about sales. But mm -hmm. if we are going to worry about sales and, and, and join, 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 join a, a community conversation, then let's find people who know how to tell these stories in a way that, um, that, that, that the community can consume it. Basically, don't try and do it yourself. Find a pro who can who can tell good stories, who can tell stories that 
will not be seen as um, you know opportunity. I felt like I needed to add that. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Yeah. I think I think uh, um, just to add on to that, I think what brands should um, what they should ask themselves is like, you know, what do you stand for, right? What is that thing that you stand for apart from selling water or selling ink? You know, exactly. what is that thing that you stand for? And it also speaks into purpose, right? And purpose basically is the intersection between what you do best and how, you, and how, how that can feed into serving the world, okay? You know, but not every, not every, not every purpose is, should be geared towards serving the world. Eh? Others can be just be, you know, helpful, you know? How do you help or how, how do you provoke thought, okay, using your brand. Uh, I, I, hang on a second, hang on, sorry, Fred, hang on, there's somebody at the door, hang on. Uh, sorry, as Biko takes care of, the, uh, of his lunch being dropped, uh, Doug, do you want to jump in? Yeah, um, brand purpose. I, I guess this is where your objectives matter from the beginning. You know, as a brand, I've noticed that uh, here in Diani and in Nairobi, a lot of people who, there've been a lot of retrenchments in the last few years. Me, my, uh, I was retrenched myself. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of people who get retrenched jump into the same things. You know what I mean? I mean, they, 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 uh, either someone is gonna buy cars and get into the Uber business or buy motorcycles and people just do the same things. And that's ma mainly because anyone, most people who start businesses don't really have uh, their own objectives in mind. They just see some, someone doing something, they see that person's success and they want, to, they want to be that, they want to do that. What you're supposed to do as a business in the beginning, this is why, why it matters from the beginning. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look at your community and, 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 and look at what your community needs and then provide that as a business. So that when now, for example, we're in a crisis, it's easy for you to fit in and do what, what, what's relevant to you because you're the only one providing that particular service or product. Yeah. So yeah. I think Biko is back, but I feel like, I think we should uh, keep that in mind as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It was, it was the police. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so just to recap, your, your original objectives matter a lot. That's absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, I think you should stand for something. Yes. When I say you stand for something or you, you know, fall for everything, um, as a brand, you're just not selling a product or giving a service. You, you, ha they ha you have to believe in something more than just what you're doing. Exactly. And, and storytelling, man, storytelling is, um, it's, it's, it's putting the story before your brand, before your product, you know, because people don't remember, you know, that you're selling water. People will remember what you believe in. Eh? And so the story should be the vehicle Yes. that the brand rides on, right? And, and I think at this point, and at this very you know, tricky time of COVID, um, it's, it's important to sort of rally communities around certain value systems that you believe in. Uh, compassion, like I mentioned, you know, uh, uh, and being together as, as Africans or as Kenyans or as human beings, all right? So your, your storytelling, the arc of your storytelling should be ideally for greater good, especially at this time. So brands should also look to share positive stories around kindness and sacrifice and support healthy and safety messages for trusted sources. Yeah, I think Fred, uh, my time is up. 20 minutes, right? 22 have extended. Doug, you want to take it from here? Yeah, um, is that that can hear? I think Doug. Right. I think he's on mute. Doug, you're on mute. If you're trying to speak, sorry about that. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Um, no I just wanted to speak to the brand custodians who are listening. Um, the, the brand managers out there, the creatives out there, and um, everyone's working from home right now. And, 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 and the creative process in, in an unconventional workspace is, 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 is 
not not what you're used to. I mean, in the office, you're expected to do some things by a certain time. You've got deadlines, you've got things you've got to do, and you've got people watching you. At home, you've got nobody watching you. So I know a lot of creative people get a lot of inspiration from what they watch, I mean, their own entertainment. So I just wanted to advise people, man, try and, try and if, if, if you're a storyteller for a brand, try and use your entertainment as research as well. Yeah, watch, watch, um, watch or consume entertainment that, that, that inspires you to tell better stories. Um, I don't know what, uh, personally, my own creative process hasn't really suffered because I've, I've, I've worked from home for a while now. But uh, the things that work for me sometimes is just like having, if you've got some space in your house, uh, maybe get a separate room or just a separate space where you just do your creative work and nothing else around there. You know, it's kind of like a meditation space that works for me. Um, different things work for different people. But um, another thing I wanted to add, not even add, but reiterate is that our client's primary objective, this again is to the brand custodians, our client's primary objective right now is still sales. They want to connect with their audiences and this is where um, social media is important and all. They want to connect with their audiences but with a view to selling more at the end of the day. So um, again, uh, look for concepts that support both um, the, the, the engagement as well as the sales, never don't like, I know we're in the middle of a crisis, but there is a balance. I mean, this is why uh, we have creative people in this industry. There is a balance. I mean, there's a way to, there's a way to actually uh, get your, get your, 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 your client the sales and still uh, uh, be considerate with what the community wants. Um, yeah. And then again, um, everyone is at home right now. So, I don't know if anyone remembers a movie called The Transporter. Um, it's, the Transporter is just one big ad for Audi, but uh, nobody's got those kinds of budgets. But um, this is the time now for brands to invest in a lot of these people we see online, a lot of creative people that entertain people online. Find a way to work with them and, and create content for your, for your viewers, uh, for your audiences online. Um, not just... Uh, hard selling and 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 those 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 uh what do you call them those messages the uh, covid messages um personally i'm getting tired of the i i this might just be me but i'm fatigued i'm 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 i'm, I'm really tired of the covid messages if if we can find another way to do it or highlight maybe the other things because this is another issue we need to highlight the other um, things around COVID that the government is not really highlighting. Like, for example, here in Kuali, um, a few weeks ago, I, uh, we gave, we gave uh, you know, entertainment gave uh, some locals an idea to start a food bank. This was from you, Samir. Thanks for joining, by the way. Uh, we, we, we had an uh, idea to start a food bank here. So some guys who had the resources took the idea and ran away with it but they couldn't have foreseen some of the challenges, which we, as people who've worked with brands, could foresee. But um, some of the challenges is, uh, one of the challenges is the communication around, around COVID-19. They had to work with the government and some officials from the government came down here, health officials, and were telling people about who is bringing Corona to Diani. And they were saying it, 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 it's more likely to come from tourists and people from Nairobi. So to be honest with you, I was even feeling unsafe because uh, someone was attacked and, 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 and killed because they were suspected of having uh, the virus, uh, a local. But they were, they were sending the message that um, any foreign, any, any, person that who's, any person that's not from here is, is a potential threat to them. So uh, instead of victims now, uh, uh, instead, of, instead of being viewed as victims, uh, people are now being viewed as criminals. So I think messaging around that should also be be, be very strong uh, um, and not just telling people to wear masks and, and all that. Um, and then of course there's the xenophobia. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got, uh, I've seen on Facebook and I've seen it here as well. Um, people laughing at Chinese people, people 
I've seen people laughing at Chinese people in public here, and I've seen people attacking Chinese people on Facebook. Um, it's very discouraging. I mean, th th there must be a way. We, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to find a way to get the government itself as the authority telling people that fear is not a cure. Yeah, we've we've, we've lost more people from uh, violence than the virus itself. So I don't know what brands can do about that, but as creative people, we need to work towards. We need to work. Uh, we need to work on concepts that nobody else is working on. I, uh, I agree. I agree with you, Doug. Um, I think as much as we are, you know, asking the brands to stand up and be counted, um, yeah. you know, as individually, you have to reflect as well as as a creative, as a copywriter. What are you doing for yourself? Um, are you putting out the right content that can help? As you're saying, I think most of us are tired of the you know the standard COVID nineteen messages: wash your hands, do X Y Z, coffee, yeah, do that. Um, as you're saying, the emerging issues are coming out of it. Um, society is not accepting people back. You know, if someone could create content around that, you know, that would be really helpful. Sorry, sorry, Doug, you want to say something? We've done some videos on our on our Facebook page. If you go to the Inua Entertainment Facebook page, yeah, we've done some videos ourselves. Uh, we we don't. I mean, being in Diani, we cannot do the kind of productions people in Nairobi can do but yeah we try to we try to talk about some of those messages right, uh, as creatives um, right now being being I mean right now there's a lot of people that need stuff online so I find myself busier than I was before corona but I think we should also find a way to join together and use our resources and work to work together towards creating these messages as well absolutely absolutely Allow me to jump to some of the questions coming in. Um, so as mentioned earlier, we wanted to keep this short and sweet. I've been wanting to say that for a minute. Um, then we spend the rest of the time doing the questions. All right. Um, questions. Yeah. Someone asked me why, why, I started in, why we started in Noah and Kuali. Yeah. Um, why, I was working in advertising and uh, I had been thinking of going out on my own for a while. It's not always that easy. A uh, friend of mine called Alan was uh, just coming back into the country and he wanted to, he wanted to, I mean, being a creative, he wanted to do something together. And uh, he got married and uh, he came with his wife and they moved to Diani. He didn't want to live in Nairobi. So I came to visit them and Diani, I mean, for those of you who have been here, is one of the most beautiful places in the world. So I came to visit them and, and promised myself that a year from then, I'd be living in Diani. And uh, a year from then, we came here. But Inua Entertainment is not a regular entertainment company. It's called Inua because we, we, we came down here to provide opportunities and uh, elevate uh, the talents of the youth down here. Uh, Mombasa and Nairobi has a lot of talent and they do get opportunities and they're seen. Here, there's plenty of talent, but they don't get those opportunities to be seen. So that's another reason why Inua was, put, was started in Kuali. All right, excellent. Um, just a point that um, I know most of us, some of us who are kicked out because of internet have not been able to rejoin because we hit the limit. I think we've had 104 throughout the session. Um, and put, we'll still share the materials. Um, for those, of course, you're not yet together, but we'll certainly share the materials, the, both the recording and the, and the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, there's a question from uh, Wahinya who is asking, um, how do you tell a compelling story to startups? Uh, that's one and two is is lack of online engagement from a poster sign of disconnect with your target audience. Um, can I take the first one? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, how do you tell? How do you tell a compelling story to startups? He's not specified what this startup is, but he's just saying how do you tell a compelling? Yeah, I think story? what he means might be how how do you tell a compelling story as a startup? I think so. I think that's yeah. what it is. And how you tell a compelling story as a startup is like, you go back to where we started is, why are you in business? What is your, what is your primary, uh, what, what's the reason why you're in business? That's your story. And, 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 and um, everyone has to find a way to make it as, as interesting. Your, your story is, is not a complicated thing for you to, it is what, I mean, it's, 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 it's who you are 
it's what you do. That's all it is. So now all you have to do is figure out a creative way to put that. So you look at uh, the best way to, t to make it compelling is maybe look at competitors or maybe look at what other people are doing and then do it differently. That's, that's how to be compelling. Thank you, Doug. Um, I think the next one, I'll ask Biko, because for the longest, I, I don't think you've ever put a dollar behind your content. Have you? Who, me? Yeah. Who, Doug, me? No, Biko, Jackson. Say that again. Say that. Have, have you ever had to promote your post on, say, Facebook? Uh, I think once. I think once, yeah. But I think we, we've seen your engagement is a bit crazy. So the second question is, is lack of online engagement from a post a sign of disconnects with your target audience? What would you say? Is that for Biko or for me? Yeah, that's for Biko. Fred, sorry, I lost you there for a minute. Sorry, um, Hina is still asking, is lack of online engagement from a post a sign of disconnect with your target audience? From a post a sign? I'm trying to look at the question. Is it on the chat? It's in the Q and A. Is luck? Say that again. Of it's online cool. engagement for my mm -hmm. post, a sign of disconnect with the audience. No, 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 no. No, it's it's not. Eh? So, so for for instance, when I started, um, when I started writing, I'd I'd, I'd not get a lot of, oh, I'd get hardly any comments, um, or shares. Yes. Um, but it didn't mean people are not reading. Well, not a lot of people were reading, but a few people were reading. But even now, there are posts that I do that really don't go anywhere. You know, they have few shares, um, even fewer comments. Uh, but, you know, I, I get, sometimes I get emails, people saying I read their story. So I, it's, it's very tricky to, to imagine that since nobody's sharing it, or talking about it, that it, you wrote it and it went into a deep, dark abyss. And it's, yeah. it can, it, it's very dangerous because it will discourage you. I always, say, um, I always say that the worst thing you can do is to you know, keep a keen eye on engagement, so to speak, comments and shares and whatnot. It's, um, it's where the devil really lives because it can have two uh, effects. One, it will make your head grow big and two, you know, it will just discourage you and imagine, look, why bother writing something if only three people commented and the three are like your relatives, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so well, I'd, I mean, if, if don't think, uh, especially if you're a startup, don't think about the engagement you're getting from your, we ourselves, I mean, sometimes we don't get any engagement at all on, 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 on Facebook, but then we get calls. From, from, from information we posted on our Facebook. We, we, we get calls and messages, but we don't get the, the engagement online. So don't let it discourage you and then don't let it get to your head. I think Thanks also for Fred, that. it speaks Sorry? into what we were discussing before this webinar um, yeah. about, about the project um, that I'm trying to do. And, and you asked, you know, so, you know, uh, is it, are you going to monetize it soon? And the thing is, you, you don't think of monetizing it um, soon, you think of you know the the, the product first. You know uh, the question is, are you having fun creating it? If yeah. the answer is yes, I can do it for two years without thinking about the money, because I love doing it. It doesn't feel like work, and 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 it doesn't feel like you know this thing is not going anywhere because we're not making a cent out of it. So yeah. you have to love the product first before you even think of engagement. You even think of monetizing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. seeing. Some right. uh, I've seen a question about uh, the, the difference between a, a creative writer and a copywriter. Yeah. So the only the, the, the difference is a, a creative writer writes uh, stories about everything. A copywriter writes stories about brands. Yeah. And a copywriter drinks more. I think. <laughs> a copywriter drinks more. <laughs> Smokes <I don't>. more. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well. What Biko says. And then uh, someone's asked a question about uh, a, a writer's block towards certain brands. And, and the answer is what Biko's just said. If, if you don't love it, there, there's no way you're going to be able to write well for it. Absolutely. Um, allow That's, me to pick another question from uh, Claire. She's asking, uh, what will be deemed as inauthentic copy 
or in, in authentic brand story during these trying COVID-19 times? Can I take that? Sure. I think, yes. it, it, I think it would be putting yourself before the story. Thank you. you know, that would be, I think that's the shortest answer I can give, is, yeah. is don't, don't, don't be the story. You know, be the facilitator of the story, but don't be the story. And there's something you mentioned in one of the slides where you say brands, brands that's are people. Common. Yes, uh, because that's a common thing among many writers, especially creative writers. They try to be the hero rather than making the brand, the, the product, the hero. You're mm -hmm. trying to show off your writing skills instead of um, selling or, or sending your message. So anyone who's trying to do that will, will look inauthentic. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, friend. No, no, no problem. It's a conversation. Um, unfortunately, we're not, we're not in the same room, so we we'll keep interrupting each other. Uh, yeah. Then Tony has a question. It's from Mombasa. The future of running businesses online. I've identified copywriting as a key skill I need to acquire. Yes. As a newbie in this, where do I need to start? What yeah. advice can you give the newbies who want to join this field? Tony, that's a great idea um to 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 want to be able to write well for your brand um the first place you need to start of course is your language skills your language and writing skills but uh i i'm, I'm actually currently offering some copywriting classes online i've got about i think now about 12 students um i'm, I'm offering some copywriting and social media strategy classes online so you, you could maybe reach out to me all right um, how does he get all of you? Uh, oh, um, uh, could maybe, maybe you can say you can chat your information uh, in the yeah. Let me just type. Uh, look for, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me just type how you can look for me. How, how you can reach me? Yeah, and for anyone, if you want to save the information, you can save the chat. These are some dotted lines next to the chat box. You can save the chat for any reference after. Yeah. All right. There's another question from Michael. Is commercialization important in the beginning, um, especially if you need a community following at first? I think you might have answered that, Biko. Yeah, I think so. Then Anonymous is asking, <laughs> what do you do when your client insists on an angle? <laughs> yeah, um, For an angle, um, a story that you personally don't agree with, especially when time, the timing is off and it sounds rather tone deaf. This sounds like an agency person and they're anonymous. So, um, yeah, uh, we've all gone through that. Yeah. Um, two things. Uh, it depends on, first of all, your position at the agency. If you're the account director, uh, try and convince them. The, you, 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 your primary duty is to convince your client uh, what the right thing to do is. But then, if you can't uh, and you're running a business, man, just take the money. That's what I do. <laughs> well, you draw the line. Yeah, man. Uh, sorry, Doug. Sorry, um, Doug. Sorry, what? You, yeah, I, I think we're losing you. Yeah. You think? Sorry, I think we're losing Doug. No, I'm here. I've just, uh, oh, I've just put in uh, my details on how you can reach me, my phone number. So if you're interested in any uh, copywriting or social media strategy, you can just send me a WhatsApp on that number. All right, absolutely. Chat. All right, cool. Uh, and then Biko, this is for you from Momanye. Um, Biko wrote drunk. How does he juggle between creating for brands and writing for normal audiences, um, readers and such? Uh, there's something called rent. I think uh, rent, <laughs> rent, <laughs> rent, rent, rent is better to get out of bed. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think somebody mentioned, sorry, somebody met, just to deviate a bit, somebody mentioned something about, you know, writer's block. Eh? I, I honestly don't believe in writer's block. Um, I, 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 there's, I, don't, I don't have any other form of uh, income. Uh, I, basically, I, everything I write has to translate into some sort of revenue now or in th three months, all right? So, which means yeah. if I don't write today, I'm basically bleeding money. So, but I have to write, so, but I have to, but if you write daily, you, you sort of have to enjoy it, you know? 
So at the beginning, you know, you just take. I mean, you've you never gotten writer's block, Biko. No, what I get is called writer's fatigue. Oh, right? okay. Is, is when I'm just worn thin. Um, there's nothing coming out, okay? Yeah. Uh, but I know how to cut, spring back, eh? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a learned way of springing back. Uh, yeah. But writer's block, I always imagine writer's block to be you are completely unable to produce copy. Not today, not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow. Right? I've never experienced that either. I've never experienced that. Um, so Fred, what was, uh, what was the gentleman's question? Doug, um, sorry. Mama, uh, this was from Mama. He was asking how you juggle between creating for brands um, yes. and writing for no audience. So brands, brands basically keep the lights on. Mm. Uh, so I have the, I have the blog. Eh? I have the blog uh, and the blog is pretty much mine. Uh, I can write whatever I like. So it, it, it's, it's where I go to exercise my creativity. But sometimes I have to write for brands and, you know, it's, it's, it's writing that, of, of course, it's structured eh? to mean there's, there's an objective at the end. Okay. So I, 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 there are certain things, you know, you, sometimes you have to get in bed with the devil uh, because you have bills to pay. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, but what yeah. helps me, what really helps me is my blog because there I get to reclaim my creativity. You know what I mean? Mm, it's, okay. it's, just, it's just a question of, um, I have to do stuff, I have to write stuff that I love, and then I have to do stuff that I really am not hot about, but they pay me money. Mm. So it's, right. it's a delicate balance. And, and I think, you know, after all these years, I've sort of got into a place where everything sort of works out. Sometimes I do work that I extremely don't enjoy, and then I go back and do stuff that I love. So a lot of people are asking you, um, how do you spring back from this fatigue you've mentioned? Is, yes. So I, 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 read, for that? Uh -huh. I read a lot. You read so, a lot? Yes, uh, you absolutely have to read. So I read exciting things. So I'll read, um, I exercise. I, I can't stress enough the importance of exercise for me in creating copy. Because it just, when I run, it just opens my, my mind. Eh? Mm. Uh, when after, after I've run, I feel re, uh, rejuvenated. Okay. And, and sometimes I'm struggling to write something and it's refusing. And I've tried it in the morning and I've tried it in the afternoon and it's completely refused. If I go for a run the next morning, it will just open this floodgate of words. Right? So, mm. And also sleeping. Just, just rest. Guess what I do. What you smoke? No, man. I, walk. <laughs> <laughs> I walk on the beach. <laughs> no, but I walk on the beach. He's lucky. Read, read a lot, and and I like watching movies, and then sleep when you can, a lot. Yeah. But uh, different artists, of course, you'll find your own rhythm. Yeah. What works for me might not work. Some people listen to music. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's a. There's an interesting, more of a science question here. Um, what's the place for data in copywriting? Um, data in copywriting? Correct. Um, personally, for me, I really, if I want to write, I can't write at home. Because I'm just going to, um, you know, just roll up things and I'm not going to get anything done. I like an office. But then writing again is not really the action of typing or, or, or pushing a pen on a computer. But the writing itself is putting the thoughts together. So in Diani, we have a beach. So sometimes I go there and just meditate. And that's when I do the writing. Um, I take long walks as well. But I think it's different for everybody, to be honest. Right. I mean, maybe just to to revisit the question for Ekra, um, I'm not sure if she, um, I guess she's referencing in terms of data, understanding your audiences. Oh, um, I, if you don't mind, you can add on to that, um, Ekra, just to make sure the question is clear. Can I jump, want, yeah, yeah, I jump something, yeah, in terms of uh, just data in, in writing generally, right? Yeah. I, always, I always feel like stats, you know, have a way of just getting in the way of a good story. Eh? And people don't process stats very well. Eh? 
numbers and figures. They're very boring. Eh? So I'll give you an example. If you write, um, two children died yesterday, that's the first sentence. Or you write, um, three-year-old John and five-year-old Kimani died yesterday. Okay? Mm-hmm. The second one has a more of a human feel. You've put a face, okay? Mm-hmm. This tra- mm-hmm. tragedy, right? But when you say two children, it's just two. You know, it could be, it's just a number, right? Yeah. So the, the, one, the first one is driven by, you know, data, a stat, okay? Yeah. The second one is more humane, eh? John, yeah. three-year-old John and five-year-old Kimani, right? Right. Yes. So I, I always feel there's a way that you can break down data to give it a more human face yeah. because people process those better than statistics. Okay. Okay. I think I'll add on to that. There's, that, there's absolutely how you have to make it less scientific and more human. Um, I think for the data analyst also in the house, you know, in terms of knowing, you know, your audience insights, it's absolutely important to know who you're talking to. Um, I think for Biko, I don't know how you define it. You used to call them high schoolers before. What do you call them now? Your people in the blog. This is just a gang. Now they're a gang. They're just a gang. They graduated a gang now. Yeah. So you have to know your audience. You have to know at what age are they. You have to have a picture of them, a persona that you built for them. Um, and they have to understand how you speak. I think there's an audience that, for example, because if you wrote for, they might find you offensive. Or they might find not as interesting as, you know, another group may. So it's absolutely important to know who you're writing for. Yeah. I see a few hands up. Um, sorry, sorry, I, for, I completely misunderstood that question. I think it has, it's a double-edged, right? There's, it's, it's, easy, it's easy to misinterpret it. I, I, I don't know whether we've answered it for Ekra. I guess you... He or, he, he or she would tell us. Um, Samir, your hand has been since has been up since ten. I'm sure Mabis must be tired now. Do you want to speak? All right. Um, if you can, I've unmuted you. Um, if it was by mistake, I will block it in the next few minutes, in a second rather. I guess, Samia, you're playing around with it. Uh, Joan, I see your hand up. I'll allow you to speak. You can unmute your mic and speak. Joan, tell me. Um, I think there's a questionnaire for you. Oh, humanized data. Okay. That's okay. answered. I think I think guys are playing with this hand thing, so I'll meet you, John. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep your hands down. Uh, so as, there's a question from Mwangari. How do you how do you begin to pitch to brands? Do you write an email to their marketing team informing them about your skills, or you hope someone somewhere will see your articles and contact you? That's <laughs> question one. Then two. How do you increase engagement in a blog? Okay, how um how you begin to pitch to brands? Is she asking as a um as a as as an agency or as an individual? It feels like an individual. She has her own hustle, a copywriter, doing copywriting. So she's probably wondering yeah. how how does she get business from this brand? Okay, the best way for that is um maybe do a few spec ads. Take take uh, take some products and do some ads um uh, and then show them. And at the same time, um, the best way actually, talk to your friends who own businesses and do work for them, do some work for them either cheaply or for free at first and then use that to build a portfolio along with those other spec ads. Then now when you approach a a bigger client, uh, you can show them some of the work you've done. Hopefully it will even have results. All right, and then the second question is how do you increase engagement in a blog post? You write well. You write well. <laughs> yeah, just write well. And write okay. consistently. Consistently. For many I, yeah. years. Uh, it took you at three years, Biko, to get 10 comments? Yeah, it took me a minute. But uh, I didn't notice it because I was having a ball. I was sort of writing for myself. So I always say your first audience is, is yourself. Eh? Yeah. Uh, don't go chasing or looking for audiences. Uh, I've also started a blog this year, and it's not, um, okay, it's nowhere near what Biko is. But it's, it's, again, consistency, because I noticed the more I wrote, the more people read. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I, think the, I think most people struggle with that consistency of every day or every week. Uh, yeah. Perhaps just to ask, and maybe for myself as well, um, is a trick to maintaining, what's a trick to maintaining that consistency when ideally your, your audience is you, so you, which means I can also not post, no one will notice. Too fast then because you can take it home. All right, cool. Um, for me, it's, I write when um, I've got something to say, period. Yeah. I don't, I don't give myself pressure like um, write something every week or write something every month. No, I just write yeah. when I've got something to say. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Biko, anything else? Uh, um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I was um, out. Basically, how do you build that consistency, that discipline to write, you know, um, every week as you have for your blog? Yeah. Um, how do you keep... So and first, I think in many ways, but this may be in a sentence. Yeah. The most, the most important thing is passion. Eh? Yeah. If you're passionate about it, you do not feel like work. Eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so I never feel that it's work, and and it's been I think it's ten years that this year since I've been doing the blog. Yeah. And I do it every week because first, after some time, it's just it's become part of me. Eh? I just know right. I have to on Sunday I have to wake up and I have to write the blog. Right. Right. And, and the blog has sort of transformed uh, and morphed over time. Now it's more of people's stories. When I started out, I was just writing about my boring life. Eh? Um, but now it's, it's about people. And you can never run out of people's stories. It's, it's, it's a bottomless pit. So yeah, there's always content out there. And I'm deliberate in, in, in finding it. Excellent. We have well, a question. Uh, we have a question. Sorry. Michael, he says his hand is up for real, so I'll allow you to speak. Okay. Um, you can unmute your mic, Michael, and speak. Uh, hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, Michael. Hey, see, finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Biko. Thanks. Uh, I, I miss yeah, my yeah. money. Huh? Uh, Biko, Red. Douglas. Yeah, Douglas, right. yes, it was gone. It's, 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 I especially yeah, like yeah. to actually what, what Douglas said. He's one trigger my thoughts um because i've been wondering i have two things to say and i won't take more than two minutes uh, i know everyone's time is important um first i'm worried about the idea of being read as a measure for writing because we've been asking how can we write when we're not being read or if we're not being read and a sense a copywriter uh convention for lack of a better word and that means that uh we're looking for numbers right but in terms of the question was more about mm-hmm. creative writing and writing for yourself and being read no. If it's your measure, then there's yeah. another then there's another problem altogether. Um, and I think like it's it's writing if you see it more as a practice that you're doing for yourself, then because saying that it will really help. It's kind of like working out. You, you know these guys who say they're going to go to the gym. You work out. You want to work out because you're going to have a beach body, and then you go there. You put yourself on the hardest schedule. You get a trainer who's going to shout at you. Uh, and then after two weeks, you quit, and you wonder, why did I quit? Um, whereas you didn't make, put a sustainable effort. So many times, we, we, we do the same with our writing. We like set ourselves up to be like, I'm going to start a blog, and I'm going to be the best trade, and I'm going to be all this and all this, and it becomes then the, the, the giving up is, I guess, a natural consequence of that. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, thanks. thanks for that comment, uh, Michael. I appreciate that. I think we are running out of time. We're about um, three minutes out. Uh, I'll pick a few more questions. and We may not be able to answer all of them, but I'll pick a few more other questions. There's something from Juliet. How do you incorporate a human voice in the statistics? For instance, let's say someone is doing a story on a spike in GBV. I believe that's gender-based violence during COVID, and you want to infuse the numbers within the story. Uh, I think Biko, have you answered this? Is a beautiful story, uh, beautiful and sad at the same time that you did about um, a woman who was unfortunately raped um, and had to um, had to cross over from one country to another. Yeah. Would you relate the same as per this question in terms of you know putting a human voice in the numbers? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so numbers should never lead the story. Like I said. Um, what should lead this? They, we call them hangers. Hangers is uh, like, for, for that story, I think you're referring to there were birds and they didn't sing. 
they Correct. Hang, they hung out to that story, and that was a UNHCR story. The hang out to that story was that woman, and and I don't think people remember much who sort of who I was writing for. They remember the story of the woman, and 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 the woman in this case is called the hanger. So you have to hang your your communication or your story on one human face, right? And uh, there's there's always a way how you can sprinkle um, the data that that you want to enforce towards the end of a story. I always uh, tell tell the clients that I work with, ask them, you know, tell me what you want to say in one sentence, not in a paragraph. Then I can work from there. You know, so if you want to say, I want, if, if they say the communication is, uh, we have a million refugees in Uganda and they're living in some deplorable condition, full stop. That's the communication. So I need to find a way of telling this story of a million refugees, but I have to find one person to be the face of this story, to give it a more human face. But the yeah. number should never lead the story. The person should lead the story. I agree 100%. I think that answers Bivali's taboos question as well. Uh, then there's one question, I think we, we often underrate this, the internal audience, especially when your organization, you have a newsletter that goes to the staff. Um, oh, so yeah, Joseph yeah. is asking, how do you increase, engage, increase engagement for an internal audience? Yeah, um, again, um, a happy company is one with happy employees working for it. If your if your employees believe in what you're doing, they will they will they will be your ambassadors. So first, again, um, just it's about making your employees believe in, in in what you do first, and then they will just because everyone needs an incentive. Um, they're there because you pay them a salary. Let's just speak the truth. They're not there because they like you. They're there because you pay them a salary. So now if you've got a message you want to send out, you've got to make them really believe in it if you're not going to give them like a monetary incentive or something like that. So yeah. um, there are ways of giving incentives that are not just about money or positions. Um, I don't know. I guess that's where you get creative. But for me, the main thing is make them believe in whatever you want to say somehow. All right, absolutely. And I'll add that, uh, Joseph, you try to involve them in the content creation. Uh, if you can co-create with them, it's better than um, always doing it as a separate unit and then assuming they will like what you've done eventually. Um, we are at the top of the hour. Um, I think thank you to everyone. As we close, um, Biko and Doug, I would like you guys to probably have one or two words you'd like to close with. And then that will be it for it for today. Um, thank you again, guys. It's been such a pleasure. Um, over to you, Biko and Doug. Should I go first? Yeah, you can uh, go first. Uh, so people always ask, you know, how do you write well? What's the secret of writing well? The secret of writing well is writing. Writers write, you know, farmers farm, musicians sing, okay? So if you want to write and you want to write well, you have to keep writing, one. You have to read. You can't be a writer without reading. So you have to read actually more than you write. And lastly, you have to live because it's from life that informs your writing. You have to live. You have to go to Japan and see some furniture that made. I still or, you have, or you have to go to Mbita and you know, talk to fishermen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Doug? Uh, um, the only other thing I'd like to add is if, if, you're, if you're really passionate about advertising is when you can work in this industry. I left advertising not only because I was retrenched, I was actually waiting for the retrenchment, but because I lost the passion for it. I got tired of people telling me what to write. So if this is something you want to do, then... It's, it's got to be something you really, you're really passionate about. That's for writing for brands. As for creative writing, just write what you like writing, like Biko says. And yeah. that's all I have to say. So go read my blog. Go, go. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Again, people, this is very important. And I think Samir will like it. The power of simplicity. Yeah. Minimalism. Less is more. 
Yeah. Don't show off with words. Like writing, the beauty of writing, or, or, I mean, good writing comes from um, caring more about the message than, than the words you use. So if, if when you're writing and, and something just sounds, read, read, read your writing to yourself. See how it rolls off the tongue. If it, rolls, if, it, if it doesn't roll off the tongue well, then it's probably not that easy to read either. Yeah. So, publicity. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Biko. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today. I know we are faceless, but this is what life has turned it to. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having us, Fred. Yeah, stay safe, everyone. See you in the next.